first off, thank you to Maggie. I've known her for about a year. She's been awesome. She's one of the hardest working people I know and have a lot of respect for what she's built over the last year. And uh, you know, just seeing this grow, I've been to one previous, but I've seen some of the social content previous. And um, I think it's very important from a community aspect to get as many of us together as possible. So one thing that I want to know before I kind of get into my story is you know, who you guys are. So if you're a founder or an owner of a company, can you just put your hand up right now? Okay, so there's one of you here. Can you keep your hand up if you have 50 people on your team or more? Okay, if you have 50 people or more on your team. Okay, so a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight is, um, you know, the title is Developing a High Engagement Team, but really the, the real topic to me is how to change the world, right? Because any idea that any of you are envisioning, if you're not a founder yet, if you're not an owner yet, you know, you only get this development of a company with the people around you. None of us can do it ourselves. So to me, nailing this piece in your business is the most important piece. And what I'm going to share with you tonight has cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, burned relationships, sleepless nights, like a lot of pain and suffering to get things to this point. So please pay attention because I hope to save you all of that pain. Um, so just to give you kind of a quick context, I'm not going too much to the background of the company just because of time, but I really want you to understand um, the platform from which I'm learning these lessons from. So we are a brand new brick and mortar manual therapy concept. We launched three years ago, as of next month. Um, we've never taken any outside capital. We completely bootstrapped, you know, did the wrong diet for way too long, probably lost five years of my life. Um, we went to multi million dollars in sales within the first two years, and right now I have a team of uh, around 120 people, um, growing by about 15 to 20 people a month. Um, we currently have eight brick and mortar locations, with another three on the way over the next few months. Um, you know, no long-term goals are you know, far exceeding that, but this is again the platform from which I'm able to look in hindsight and say, I wish I had started my company knowing a lot of this stuff. So that's what I hope to get give to you over the next kind of six minutes, and just really. Um, you know, key principles uh, I'm going to be covering tonight are all about engagement. How do you get your people so bought into your mission and your company that they feel the sense of ownership to push it forward? And to me, the five things that you need to think about when you're thinking about how you grow your culture and grow your organization are written on the board right now. So let's talk about culture for a second. Culture is a huge buzzword right now in every you know, business training and all this stuff. And I hate that word because nobody knows what the hell it is. I said, oh, write these core values out. You know, make sure you have a mission statement. But I do not see um, you know, more than 1% of the companies out there actively pushing culture into their companies. And to me, you know, what I'm going to take you through in the next four minutes here is these five things is what actually injecting culture looks like at the you know, people level. So principle number one, you need to look at your business as a vehicle for personal development of each and every team member. Right? You have to think about you are the probably biggest contributing factor in someone's life in terms of their happiness, their satisfaction, their feeling of kind of forward momentum. And if you are not kind of being aware of that fact and respecting it, you're doing a huge disservice to your team. So the conversation that we have, every single person, I don't care if they're a student working for us for three months, we say that when you're with our company, you are trying to be your best version of yourself, both professionally and personally. And that's our culture. And if you are not doing that, you're not gonna last in our company because we have a culture of criticism to push you forward. And you know, we've kind of bred this culture and the first 10 or 15 people you bring onto your team, if they are setting this example for the rest of the team, every person coming next is gonna just buy into that and be running just as fast as them. So to me, this is the biggest philosophy, uh, kind of mindset shift that you have to think about. Your business is not to make money. It will make money as a consequence of this, but the point of your business is to personally develop your people into the best versions of themselves. Principle two. Communicate the mission at every level of the business. There's too many business owners that I talk to that they have these big dreams and ambitions, but their, their people have no idea what, you know, what the direction of the company is, what they're actually working towards. And you cannot engage your team uh, you know, in building a company at their maximum kind of engagement level without them understanding what the direction of the company is and where the end goal is. So for example, I'm in the clinic space, I see with a lot of clinic owners, they might have one clinic, and they're struggling to recruit and retain talent. And I asked the owner, you know, what are you guys working towards? When, when I, if I'm being on the team, am I just showing up to you know, put my hours in and get a paycheck? Or is there something bigger that I'm working to? And too many entrepreneurs and business owners hold this to themselves. 
And it's very important for you, especially as you're launching a new venture, get very clear for what that end game is and how you're actually going to get there. And then you need to start painting the picture in that person's head of why they're so critical to the mission. And over time, you plant these seeds, plant these seeds, plant these seeds. And you know, three, six months in, they are believing that your mission is their mission. And that makes all the difference in the end. Principle three, trust your people to make decisions for the business. I have, you know, this is the problem I had to overcome personally was that I'm a huge control freak, micromanage everything, and that was really holding the business back. And I was able to have the self-awareness to say, hey, calm down, let it go. Like, you know, you have smart people you're hired, you have talented people, you have people that are bought into the mission, and if you have that, you can let them make decisions, major decisions for the business, and be okay with people making mistakes, because they will. You know, for me, I look back at what we've done in the last few years, and I've made so many mistakes, but that's how I've learned, and that's how we progressed. And I tell our people, I expect you to make mistakes. And that's completely okay, but if you make them twice, we have to talk. <laughs> so, um, kind of one concept you can think about with this is I like to think about centralize the strategy and decentralize the day-to-day -day decision making. For us, we kind of work as a hub and spoke model. So we have a kind of corporate office, and we've got all these, I almost look at them as separate small businesses running the field. And I push as much of the day-to-day -day decision making. So for example, if something breaks out of clinic, my 21-year-old front desk team can spend up to $1,000 to fix that. She doesn't have to ask anyone. She has the contractor's number. She can call and fix them. And that takes so much kind of corporate bureaucracy out of the picture and makes your business, you know, that's one reason we've been able to, able to scale a service-based business so quickly is we've been able to just trust our people to make the right decisions. Principle four, people at every level need to feel that they have a voice in the business and that is being heard. I will, you know, after, I'm not really involved in the hiring process anymore, but usually within the first month, I go and have a quick coffee with our new team members, and I will tell them, if you have a good idea, I don't care if it's your first day of the company, if you see somewhere you can save money, you can be more efficient, something's holding back, something's causing tension in the business, come to me, come to any of the executives, and tell us, and again, make sure that people feel like their opinion holds weight. I see too many businesses, they think that, you know, you're the CEO and then you've got this management team, and it's just, it really holds back innovation because these people that are working for you to build your mission, they're on the front lines seeing, you know, the fires that you may not be seeing, especially as the company grows. So you really need to make sure that people have um, a way to get this information upstream. And also the most important thing as you as an owner or kind of an executive is to go back and tell them an update. Right? If someone gives you feedback and they never hear from you again, they're not going to keep giving you feedback. So you have to reinforce the cycle to make sure that if you are giving your team the opportunity to speak up, that you're equally coming back and saying, listen, thank you for that, here's what we're doing with it, or here's what we're not doing with it and why. And as soon as you do that a few times, they feel like they are contributing to growing the venture. And that's where that buy-in and that engagement comes to. Principle five, and this ties everything together. Building speed, momentum, and excitement. This is just the multiplier effect, and it's one reason we've been able to grow so quickly. So first, speed. Speed of implementation. How quickly do you have an idea, and is it in your business? Right? I can pivot our entire company in one day. 120 people, we can be doing something else tomorrow, because we've created this culture of implementation and execution, and you need to do that from day one, even when it's just yourself. Don't sit on good ideas that can impact your business in a big way. Momentum. Momentum is this hidden factor, and you're only going to hit it once in your business. I've seen too many business owners try to, you know, the growth has stalled or they, they just kind of, you know, got stagnant. It is so challenging to try to restart that and get your team back bought in with that. So to me, pay attention as you start your company. In the first two years, there's going to be a point where things start snowballing. And when that happens, you need to hit the gas pedal because that's where things get easier and easier and easier. And the last thing is excitement. Are your people actually excited to come and show up and contribute to the venture? Right? And for us, we've had a lot of success in the physiotherapy space because physio is very boring. It just, that's the way it is. It's always in this very sterile, medical field. And for us, you know, our whole tagline is heal the world. And we're starting to expand internationally now. We're giving opportunities, for example, for some of our therapists to go to Jamaica, to the Middle East, to Nigeria, based on some of the networking that we've been able to do. And you know, we've created this sense of purpose for them and this excitement. And something that, you know, where else are they going to go work? Oh, their colleagues, their classmates are going on an all expense pay trip to Nigeria to treat the physical therapists there and train them for a week so they can learn continuing education credits that were getting approved by the medical board there. Or you're going to just show up and you know, put your ultrasound on someone. Right? So, so create that sense of excitement. And this isn't something that um, 
you know, you necessarily have to do from day one, but as you gain momentum and as your company grows quick, more quickly, you need to think about what is exciting for my team to come to work for? Why are they showing up every day other than the paycheck? Um, last thing I'll say is, probably one of my favorite books, if you want some more in-depth topic on this, is uh, Daniel King has a book called Drive, where he talks about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And one of the keys from that is that people are intrinsically motivated by three factors. Right? Mastery, economy, and purpose. And to me, whatever you do in your life, you need to make sure that your people are feeling a sense of autonomy, where they have flexibility to contribute to it, a sense of purpose, where they know that mission and they're excited about it, and mastery, where they take a lot of satisfaction in that journey. And if you can nail all those three components, plus everything else I mentioned here, your team is going to be on fire, and you know, it makes your job as an owner or CEO much easier when everyone is moving in the right direction. Thank you.